work seamlessly together in iLife 04. But today, we're announcing something so cool. It's a fifth app that's going to be part of the iLife family, and its name is GarageBand. What is GarageBand? GarageBand is a major new pro music tool, but it's for everyone. It's for all of us. And what it does is it turns your Mac into a pro quality musical instrument and complete recording studio. One app. Now, you could say, well, but this is a kind of a niche thing, right? No, it's not. Because recent surveys have said that one half of all US households have at least one person who is a current musician. Not somebody who played something in high school 20 years ago, but currently plays a musical instrument. Half of US households. This is a really big market. And we think GarageBand is gonna to appeal to these folks. So what, so what is GarageBand <laughs> before Steve Jobs goes on and tells you? Uh, welcome, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today, and this is something a little bit different. We're gonna have some fun in this one. We'll be reliving the highlights and the lowlights of uh, Macworld Keynote 2004, and more specifically, the final app in the iLife pack, which is the brand new app in 2004 called, you guessed it, GarageBand. So GarageBand is 16 years old, if you can believe it. And uh, yeah, it has changed quite a lot from what we now use on our phones that we run around with compared to what was launched back in 2004. If you've seen this keynote before, you'll know that it's interesting and pretty fun and pretty nostalgic. If you haven't before, then welcome. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to jump in. I'll, uh, I'll pause at a few points. And if you've got any comments, if you're here live on YouTube or Facebook, please uh, drop them here. I'll throw those up on the screen as we go through. And uh, if you, well, I've got a question for you, actually. What were you doing in 2004? Or what are your memories of 2004. I would love to uh, love to hear those and I'll throw those up on the screen as we go along as well. But let's get back and hear from Steve a little more about this fantastic new piece of software called GarageBand. What is GarageBand? Well, you can digitally mix up to 64 tracks right on your Mac. Right? You can play over 50 software instruments that we've included right in GarageBand. These are super high quality software instruments that you can play if you have a USB or MIDI keyboard. You can use over a thousand professional loops. For those of you familiar with Soundtrack, we built Soundtrack right into GarageBand. And there's over a thousand professional audio loops. So it's like bringing the band with you. The backup band comes with you. Of course, you can, live, you can record live audio performances. You have over 200 pro quality audio effects. And you have vintage and modern guitar amps. In other words, you can plug your electric guitar right into your Mac and pick from vintage or modern guitar amps. Because guitar this was a big deal. This. There wasn't much and like that for guitar right Mac. recording back in the day. So software instruments, this is a really big deal. Software instruments right on your Mac. One of these is a $50,000 Yamaha grand piano right on your Mac, right? If you've got a kid that plays the piano and they've got a Mac, you can get them GarageBand, a pair of headphones, and a USB keyboard, and they've got a $50,000 grand piano in their bedroom. <laughs> pre-recorded loops. Come on, clap it up. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Not only do we have over 1,000 pre-recorded loops by great professional musicians, but these things adjust their tempo and pitch automatically to whatever you're, you're doing. And of course, live recording, you know, guitars, vocals, whatever you, whatever you want. And this is all in one app. And this is what it looks like. GarageBand. Now. Old school. To help me demo GarageBand, I'm not a musician. And so uh, we asked a friend of ours John Mayer, to come on out and help us demo GarageBand. John? Ah, uh, John Mayer. Remember John Mayer. All right, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. How are you? So, now the first thing we're going to do, John's a guitar player, but he volunteered to play keyboards for us too here. What am I and doing? And so, uh, <laughs> we're going to bring up GarageBand. And just give a very simple demo. First, I want to show you, have you hear these software instruments. So, 
GarageBand should be coming up. Here we go. And I've loaded a bunch of software instruments into this project. And so we're just going to have John play. We don't have to record anything or do anything fancy. This is what the piano is. That's, John's playing a MIDI keyboard that's hooked right into this Mac here. That's all we need. USB or MIDI keyboard. There's the piano. Let's keep going. Yeah. Got to remember, uh, USB was pretty new back then too. Let's use our keyboard to play some other instruments like a, a jazz bass. Awesome. Or how about a choir? Awesome. <laughs> I love Steve's genuine enthusiasm. Like you can't you can't fake being that excited about things. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Play guitar across the table. <laughs> a, a 70s electric piano like a Rhodes? The Rhodes sound is still one of my favorite garage band sounds. I think it, they do a really good job of their uh, electric pianos. Percussion like this jazz kit. Great drumming, John Mayer. That's a bit better. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like a Happy party. birthday, Ethan. C, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's me too. C, and a C major, the all the way. That guitar sounds better than the guitar we have in GarageBand now. I don't know how that's possible, but it is. For string bands, that's really cool. And I was telling Steve yesterday when I first tried this out that. Guitar players traditionally go through <coughs> keyboard sounds, and there's uh, synth keyboards have always traditionally done some things better than others. And one thing that's never really been done right is the guitar. Still is so many. It's just inherently not a static kind of instrument, and this is the first time I've ever heard a guitar sound like a guitar on a keyboard, especially with the velocity being that you can you can bend into a note. It's on back, it's back on grand piano now, but when it was for the guitar, you can hear it. <coughs> string noise in there too, so it has all the attack and all the kind of sound, so it's pretty cool. And so at any time, we could record this, any of these performances. You want to just play something on the piano sure. and I'll just go ahead and record it here. Go ahead. So we can just go back and play that back. Very simple. It's very, very simple. So now let me show you when we go ahead and make a composition of, uh, of four instruments. We just made a little uh, lounge jazz combo. Again, these are all I miss the I miss the live aspect of these things where things can go wrong. We'll just, you know, it was much more fun. Like this. That's a good question, Bubba. I don't think they're in there, and I don't think you can buy them unless you bought them back in the day. Now, because good question, of the software instruments, I can use the data but change the instrument. So I'm going to change this tremolo phone here. So let's say... <laughs> they're kind of laughing at him. Nice choice of instruments, Steve. 
That's better. So this was like super revolutionary for the time. There was software like Cakewalk, but nothing like this, nothing this simple and intuitive. So it was a bit of a game changer so and still is. Idea, right? Pretty cool. <laughs> now, <laughs> right, I don't know. By the way, you can do anything with these instruments. Like I, I can go back and change the tempo. Now, next uh, is the uh, stressful part of the program because this is where I want to show you uh, loops. All right, before we, uh, before we let Steve show us loops, which is kind of fun, we get to watch uh, Steve create some loops. And to be honest, this is, um, this is where um, GarageBand got its reputation for being the whole, uh, for non-musician, for beginner type DAW, because um, they made a big deal of this, that they obviously wanted to appeal to the larger section of the market. So Steve made a, a real point to show that he could create music music in GarageBand. Um, no, I shouldn't say that because loops are cool. I love loops. You know that I love loops. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So we'll jump into that in just a moment. Uh, thank you again, everyone who's here live. If you're catching up on the replay, we do live shows here on the channel a lot. Uh, we also have videos about how to record and create, what am I saying? Create, record and release your best music using GarageBand as well as other applications. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Now I've got some, uh, some fun facts here about 2004, I thought I would share. And again, if you have memories of 2004, maybe think back to some of the technology. What computer were you rocking? Did you have a mobile phone or a cell phone? And, and what sort? Do you remember what you had? And uh, yeah, do you remember what you were doing with music creation in 2004? If you're watching live or on the replay, drop those in the chat here or in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So this was Macworld 2004 in San Francisco. To give you a bit of a feel for where we were in the Apple universe, the iPod had been released just three years earlier. So the very first first generation iPod that was what, four gigabytes? It was amazing. A thousand songs in your pocket. If your pocket was like a big chunky pocket, that was 2001. Uh, and the iPhone wasn't released till 2007. So three years after this, we got the very first iPhone. So we are in this middle of this Apple bubble where they've made this huge comeback. They've released the iPod. They've basically uh, grabbed all the market share of MP3 players and music. And then just three years later, they would release the iPhone. Uh, the iPods that were out there, the iPad mini had just released with the very first click wheel. If you remember the click wheel, anyone have an iPod with a click wheel? And the iPod Classic was a massive 40 gigabytes in 2004. We'd really come a long way from the original four gigabyte model. Uh, in the Mac world, uh, there were, it was PowerBook time. So the G4 was the big Mac. So the, the iBooks, the PowerBooks and the iMacs were all the G4. Uh, me personally, I, uh, I, I was rocking like a Nokia. I think I had my first sort of Nokia smartphone or it might've even been the Trio, the Palm Trio. I was a big Palm Pilot user back in the day. Any other Palm users amongst us? So I had, a, I had an array of the very early, very clunky smartphones that, you know, had, what was the web called? The WAP web, like the GPRS web. It was, yeah, it was, it was not good. It was very, very slow, very, very clunky. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of what technology was doing. And, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit, uh, about uh, a little, some more world events and some more of what I was doing, uh, in 2004 in the next break. But why don't we jump back over now and take a look at Steve Jobs demoing his music prowess right here in GarageBand. And uh, I'm going to show you what a non-musician can do uh, with loops, and that's going to be me. Uh, so I'm going to try to make something using loops. So we come up with a grand piano, but I'm not going to use a grand piano for this. Uh, so I'm going to start afresh. And I'm going to go down here where we have our loops. These are the thousand plus loops by professional musicians that we've, uh, we've shipped with GarageBand. And so I'm going to go pick a guitar. I'm going to say guitar and uh, rock and blues and something that's relaxed. And I can just go down and click on these and hear them. I'm going to pick one, this one here, and I just drag it up and drop it on, and uh, I want to stretch it out a little bit, so I, I didn't. here and I just I was stretch using... it out, I'm stretch it out about that far, what was I using in and I'm going to turn repeat Probably on, nothing. stretch repeat out about <laughs> Talk that Talk about far. that in the next break. I'm going to start playing this, 
and then I'm going to go get a woody, I'm going to go get a bass. So I'm going to reset this, and I'm going to say I want a bass, and I want sort of a world sound, and I want something that's acoustic. And the one I want uh, that I found that I liked is uh, woody Latin bass, and you can just go sample these all day long. Pretty good, yeah? So I'll drag that in. Stretch it out. And then I'm going to go uh, to favorites. I put uh, some Sorry, percussion ST was in. the bomb. What was that here? Yeah, this was it here. Yeah? So I'll drag that up there. And uh, now I'm going to find, you know, let's just play some of these things. They're interesting. How they can make it sound so different. Likewise, Ian, I think, uh, yeah, I was working full-time at a bit to do a whole lot of music. But I'm going to get uh, a delicate piano, which I like a lot. All right, let's drag this up there. Let's see, that's where I want it, right there. We'll turn it up. And uh, I'm going to grab uh, this classic guitar as well and drag it up there. See how we're starting to come together here. I dance like a 42-year-old nerd. So that's the first half here. And uh, then I found uh, I like this uh, funky electric guitar for my second half. back here and I'm going to go get some uh, horn stabs. Oh, he said horn stabs. No, no. And uh, I want these. No, I don't want those. I want this one. Oh, I still make music like this sometimes. There we go. Doing exactly this. So fun. And I can just search right. for things like this. And drag them up here. I bet someone's and tried to create composition piece by piece. this exact song. And there we got it here. Should throw that as a challenge to the uh, Let's turn it up a bit. GarageBand Facebook group. Can someone create this exact loop on GarageBand Mac? idea. Okay. Whoop. Go Steve. Now, guitar players love great old amps because they have yeah, magical sounds that are hard to recreate. And we, ha we have shipped a half a dozen great guitar amps uh, with GarageBand. Oh, I'm going to tease you there. We're going to come back and take a listen to John Mayer shredding on the guitar in just a few moments. Thank you again for those here live contributing your memories of 2004. Yeah, uh, as Jay was saying here, it was considered cheating to have digital stuff. And uh, and Gary was talking, yeah, the same about digital cameras. It, it was. It was weird, wasn't it? We had this uh, crossover. Look, at, you, you could say it's still happening. We had this crossover between those using digital to record and to do photos and video and everything. And those are like, nothing will ever replace analog. You're never going to get the warmth of an analog uh, recording console in your digital platform platform. 
And again, people are probably still saying the same things these days. Uh, let's jump in and talk about a few more other things. I thought we'd go through a few world events that were happening in 2004 just to either make you feel really old or make you go, I didn't even, I was one when that was happening, Grandpa, like uh, like Ethan. Happy birthday, Ethan, who's 17 uh, yesterday. So let's, let's go with some world events, shall we? So February of 2004, a dude called Mark Zuckerberg decided to create something called Facebook at Harvard University uh, to basically... Basically, um, I mean, you, to, to, to check out all of the other students. I think Facebooks were actually things that you had like a physical book and he thought, hey, let's make an online version of this physical book so that people can chat to each other and you can find out who you're going to university with. And we know what happened in the next uh, 16 years from there. We now have uh, some people who don't actually know that there's an internet. They just think there's a Facebook. So uh, wh whether you love Facebook or uh, tolerate it, <laughs> it happened. It started in 2004. We had the Olympics. So back, uh, back when we could have things like Olympic events, uh, back in Athens in Greece. That was in August of 2004. Um, and politically, we, we elected two new leaders uh, here in Australia. John Howard's Liberal National Party were re-elected. And uh, in November, only a month later, George W. Bush was re-elected as the President of the United States of America. Uh, I didn't vote for either of those dudes, but if you did, more power to you. Uh, and one cool thing for the gaming nerds amongst you, the Nintendo DS was released in November of 2004 and is still the number one selling mobile console of all time. The best selling handheld gaming machine of all time, the Nintendo DS. And if you were around then, you knew that everyone, it was like the, the iPad of the days. Every kid, well, including kids like me, uh, kids in their 20s, but especially kids had their DS. They were just, it would be ubiquitous. You'd go everywhere and they'd have their DS. They'd be doing their Pokemon thing. They'd be playing the games. They'd be doing the stuff. So that was uh, 2004 and some world events. Uh, in the next break, I'll, uh, I'll tell you some... Um, some interesting new English words and terms that first came about in 2004. There you go, there's a little tease for that. But for now, let's jump back over, get back to Steve and John shredding on some guitar in GarageBand all the way back in 2004. You can plug your guitar right into your Mac and John's agreed to demo it for us here. In multiple keys. In multiple keys. <laughs> so let's start with unprocessed guitar. So British Invasion. Oh, yeah. John May is going to get me a copyright strike. <laughs> I'm just turning him down. <laughs> you know what that app sounds like. He's not playing it very well, so it probably won't come up. That's it. Summer sounds. Yeah, it was it was the uh, instant messaging age, wasn't it? Two thousand and six, apparently, Bubba. And this yeah. is my favorite. This is the one uh, the Apple guys came by my place, and I went, "No, just keep us here for a minute." <laughs> this is, you know. Yeah. You know, now instead of lugging an old amp around, you can just lug your power book around and plug your guitar right into it. So here's an example of um, 
Some yeah, I believe so. I think it was 2006. Like well, I don't know. I'll have to check the Wikipedia guitar. page. You can get a microphone and it can sound like this. get the idea. Now, let's put it all together. A let's familiar story right here. Instruments uh, with live recording uh, and with loops all together and see what we can do here in a project. And John built this uh, with, uh, with some software, uh, with some loops up here. Matter of fact, these Motown drum loops, I'm told, were actually, they're the original Motown drummers who played on uh, My Girl and, uh, and um, Heard it through the grapevine. And I was going to say, he only knows one Motown song. <laughs> and uh, so anyway. The fun thing for me, though, I'm going mean, to interrupt you. The fun thing for yeah. me is wh when I first saw this, especially that shuffle team just played, is that it's a practice tool. And when I was growing up, you know, when you first learn a scale, you want to play it over something. And, and most of the time you play it, you have to play it on records where there's already an instrument. And so you have to pretend the lead guy isn't there. Or you just play against nothing. And it's bad for your time. It's bad. And I just wish I had this when I was 13 or 14. I would have locked myself in my room forever and just gone around and around and around and around playing on it. You know, that's the cool part about it. That's our new marketing campaign to get 13 year old kids to lock themselves in their room forever. So let me just play this. John composed this and he's going to lay down a lead guitar track, but let me play it before he does so you can hear it. Miss those like pastel colors. So let's go back to the beginning, and I'm going to hit record, and John's going to lay down the lead guitar track using a 70s amp. So let's go. I wonder if John Mayer's, like, uh, copyrighted this song. <laughs> Another copyright strike. It's like, uh, it seems that you played uh, Garage Band 04 Jam by John Mayer as part of your video. Because John Mayer needs all that advertising run revenue. <laughs> Porter Studio for the win. So when am I going to get this back? You brought it in my life and they took it from me. When do I get it back? So let's play it back. We've got it captured here now.
righty, we've only got uh, a couple of minutes uh, left of the video here. So uh, I'll jump back over here and we'll do our final break here before we finish off and hear the last words about GarageBand. Uh, so Bubba's saying, you know, for I was stacked up with Quark Express, PageMaker, Illustrator, and Photoshop, Acrobat was still dysfunctional. Uh, was still uh, d uh, dysfunctional? Uh, yeah, for color separation, offset printing. So yes, you're, you're clearly a smarter man than I being able to do design stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I did get it here, autocorrect, I know. The, the Fox text, I'm sure that's a Fox text, which is cool. Um, GarageBand for iOS in 2016 was Hamish's first DAW. We're talking about your first uh, thing you recorded on. Uh, I used GarageBand on iPad 2 back in 2012-13, yeah. The Yamaha PSR, so long ago I can't remember the model. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like that, isn't it? For me personally, um, I, my original recording, so I started out in DOS-based recording software. I used Tracker, so Amiga had sort of these, um, these Tracker software in this mod format, and then it sort of got ported over to, I think Atari ST also used it, got ported over to the IBM PC. I used software called Scratch. Dream Tracker 3, so when I was 14, 15, 16, that was kind of what I was using. I also used Band in a Box, if anyone's used that. Apparently, it's still kicking around as a as a new app. I think it might even be on iOS. I'll have to check it out. So I used that very early on. Also owned a 4-track, uh, a, four -track, a Tascam Porta Studio 424 Mark II, which I loved and then sold and then regret most days that I actually got rid of that thing because it was pretty darn cool uh, and would be very fun to play around with these days. And uh, then, yeah, it wasn't until I, I did, so someone was saying before that they sort of went off and did the, the work, the family, the everything, and then came back to music. So when I came back to music, I used something called Music Creator, Cakewalk Music Creator, version 6, I think, and then I might have updated to version 7. It was a cut-down version of the old-school Cakewalk, uh, which is now Cakewalk by BandLab, so that was pretty early on. Then moved on to Reaper on the PC, played around with that, and then discovered GarageBand on the iPhone and iPad, and the rest is history. Um, we'll see what other folks have had to say. So Zelda fan is uh, Audacity or Music Studio on the iPhone or iPod. Yeah, very, very, very cool. Uh, hello to uh, to Brian. Greetings from Chile. Uh, the iPad Mini Two was Hamish Bird's first uh, first go. Uh, Tom Rochelle first it was a Radio Shack mixer into a cassette tape deck. Yeah, I probably missed that part. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I also did that. I also did the mixer. So I had a Radio Shack, uh, literally a Radio Shack mixer, a four four channel mixer, four mono channels. So we'd basically just plug in via quarter inch. We plug our guitar amp out into those, and then maybe a microphone. And the drums, I, I can't even remember. I think we just hung a like old ten dollar dynamic mic from like the ceiling somehow and recorded drums. So yeah, drums, bass, guitar, vocals, four channels into a tape deck. It was really epic. I should find those tapes and play some for you. <laughs> um, Amiga, yes, Amiga Two I used ST three, Scream Tracker three on Atari. Yeah, so Scream Tracker three was the bomb. If you've never programmed, uh, programmed a beat using like really tiny, like few kilobyte eight bit samples, and used your keyboard to tab around and to put the samples in the different places and change velocities and change notes, then yeah, you haven't lived until you've done that. And uh, being able to hear a piece of music at the end of that that you've basically programmed uh, using your keyboard is pretty darn cool. Uh, in 88, Bubba, uh, Mark of Unicorn, I use Mark of Unicorn's Performer, very cool. Uh, Jack Alsop, I'm looking for a door on Windows 10. Uh, Cakewalk by BandLab, go over and see Creative Source. My buddy Mike over there does a heap of tutorials. Just search Creative Source Cakewalk, uh, free, DAW, Windows 10, runs a treat, all the options. That would be my uh, my recommendation. Uh, Radio Shack was called Tandy in the UK. Yeah, it was. We had both. So we had Radio Shack, Tandy, and Dick Smith Electronics, and they were all kind of intertwined within the same stuff. They all sold the same gear. Uh, Scott uh, says, I don't remember the name, but I had some music loop software on PC, but more seriously, until GarageBand on iPhone. Yeah, so I had something called... Well, I had original Fruity Loops, which is now FL Studio. People, I, I, wanna, I always say that to people when they're like, man, I lay down these sick beats on FL Studio. I'm just like, oh, you use Fruity Loops. And they're like, what are you saying? <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying to me right now? They don't like that FL Studio, which sounds all cool, is actually called Fruity Loops. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, hello to you, Mike. Uh, good to have you here. Jose, thank you. Um, yeah, it's a bit of fun here. We'll finish off the video in a moment, but I just wanted to wanted to get a bit nostalgic and retrospective here. Oh, the old uh, Spectrum. Uh, spec Drum on the 48K Spectrum. 
Yeah, we didn't have the Specky uh, here in Australia. It was all Commodore 64 here. I never quite got into music on the C64. Um, Ian Skeg says, uh, I was surprised that a studio that recorded a band owned the recording. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was a bit of a slippery slope back then, wasn't it? Alrighty, uh, we should get uh, back into it. Yeah, Fruity Loops for the win. Absolutely. Good old Fruity Loops. Love me some Fruity Loops. And uh, yeah, as Mike George started on a four-track tape recorders with N-Sonic gear. Yeah, I think the those of us that, that learnt on the four-track, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's a, was a rite of passage back then that you had to use a four-track. And bouncing it down, like you didn't, you didn't stop at four tracks. You bounced those three tracks back to one and then started again. And by the time that you were into like your fifth pass, your first tracks were barely audible and very bad quality. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Alrighty, let's jump back over and finish off. We're going to hear the rest of John Mayer's little composition here, and then we're going to hear Steve's final thoughts back in 2004 Mac World Keynote. <laughs> See what we can do with this. It's incredible. John, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Now, one last thing I want to do here uh, is, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to go up here uh, and I'm going to say <laughs> export to iTunes, right in GarageBand. You can export right to iTunes. And Wouldn't that be a nice feature the mix down really on your iPhone or iPad? We don't have to wait all day for it. It's very fast. So it creates the mix down. It's going to load it right into iPods, iTunes, create a special playlist for me so I know exactly where it is. And I can put it right on my iPod. Yeah. <laughs> And I think iTunes has popped up behind here. And here it is, garage band playlist and live guitar. Right there. Pretty cool, huh? So, pretty neat. So this, this is GarageBand, again, over 50 software instruments. See, all you need is a USB or MIDI keyboard, and you're in business with 50 awesome software instruments. Over 1,000 pre-recorded loops. This is your backup band right inside GarageBand. Live recording, guitars, vocals, anything you want. A lot of great old amps if you're a guitar player. All in one app, and this is GarageBand. So. We've got, we got iTunes, we've got iPhoto, brand new iPhoto, we've got brand new iMovie, brand new iDVD, and now GarageBand. And now GarageBand, indeed. Uh, we've got some, uh, some good comments coming through here, talking uh, about four tracks and reminiscing about the days of uh, recording on four track tapes. Having to use chrome or metal tapes in your four track recorder, don't ever use those normal bias tapes. Uh, not going to end well. Need to, need to go the chrome. Uh, stuck in the 70s, 2004, now at version 2 point something. Uh, doesn't need to be updated. Yeah, so uh, GarageBand is now at version 11. Someone help me out here. Uh, GarageBand Mac uses uh, at least 10, 10, 11. Um, GarageBand on iOS, which is what I'm more proficient with, is version 2.3.8. So yeah, GarageBand iOS has only been around since 2011 when it was first released on iPad. And then, uh, yeah, it was released on iPhone very soon after that. So it's been around, what, nine, nine years? Still a long time. Uh, but the original GarageBand, uh, yeah, has gone through the versions. In fact, uh, let's just have a quick look here. If, you, if you're getting nostalgic like me and you want to learn a bit more, as always, our friends over at Wikipedia... 
have a pretty cool garage band entry here, which, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe if you've got some extra info, go and update it. Uh, but you can actually come through here and see a little bit about the history of garage band, all the different versions that we have there. Uh, there you go. Uh, garage band 10.3.4 was released October, uh, December 11, 2019. So I guess that's what we're at at the moment. Uh, but yeah, you can see there, someone was mentioning logic before. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, so garage band was created in 2004. Apple inquired eMagic. Uh, makers of Logic in 2002. So it was basically tied in with Logic from the get-go by the looks of things. So uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, jump over there and take a look at that because there's a lot of cool information over there about GarageBand and about all the different products and things that we were using back in the day. Uh, yeah, you can still buy Porter Studios. I actually picked one up from a, a second-hand shop for about $20 the other day. It doesn't work, it doesn't work, but apparently it, it, see, everything powers was on it's an old Yamaha unit uh, but it just doesn't the tape doesn't spin so I'm assuming it's a head tape uh, either tape heads or tape belts or something like that I don't know I need to find someone smarter than me that can look at that uh, <laughs> I know over 50 sounds so low now I know they talked about all the, the the sounds and the loops and the things in there at the time it was pretty cool uh, yeah 64 tracks and to have you know 50 different sort of sampled sounds was cool and keeping in mind that these sort of things weren't really available definitely not to sort of the the consumer level virtual instruments weren't there so sampling an actual grand piano and putting it into a software instrument wasn't a thing now of course it's ubiquitous it's everywhere everyone everyone's doing it uh, all the different plug-in manufacturers are doing it uh, it does take practice to, to record with just four tracks. It's definitely a very, uh, a very good, uh, a good habit. Like if you, I've, I've tried to do that. I've done a four track challenge even now, just trying to get some, a cool sound with just four tracks is pretty fun. Uh, yes, GarageBand Mac is now, uh, 10.3.4, uh, which we just talked about there. We'll see if we got, uh, <laughs> yeah, the ancient, ancient small white Mac, MacBook. Yeah, so they had, what was it, the 12-inch, the, the MacBook, and then it was called the PowerBook back then, wasn't it? The PowerBook or the iBook that we had back then. Uh, yeah, cassettes, cassettes are the thing. Cassette, tape cassettes, not caskets. <laughs> That's a different thing. If you're recording using caskets, something's gone terribly wrong. Uh, and Jade, we are indeed spoilt for tech these days. You are correct. We we live in the future. I say that a lot that we live in the future. So if you are, if you are under the age of probably about 30, um, especially if you're under the age of 40, y yeah, please just just stop and just take a take a little bit of a, a breath and go, I am very lucky that uh, the pioneers like Jade uh, and like the other folks here, like Gary and Bubba and Mike and everyone else that's been here, we had to kind of do all this stuff. We had to, we had to, we we're in the trenches. We we're like, let's, let's do the old man story now. It's like, hey, when I was a boy, we had to record, we had to, to make the tape ourselves, and we had to melt the plastic in front of the fire and yeah, no, not quite, but it was, uh, it was, it was different and it was a lot of fun. Um, Mike said, I once, uh, I once used a Yamaha MD8 super high tech in the early nineties. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you one more story here and then we'll, we'll, we'll finish up very shortly. But, um, yeah, when I recorded my, my band's first demo, like first actual demo, we went to a studio. The studio, now I can't remember if it was $20 or $25 an hour. It was a lot though for me. And we had to buy about eight or eight or 10 hours. So it cost us as a band of three, it cost us around the $300 mark. But that was for the recording, mixing, mastering, and then we got the, the DAT tape at the end. And I was blown away because we went and recorded in this studio. It was 1997, so again, about seven years before this, and he had a digital hard drive eight-track recorder. And I just thought this thing was just ridiculous. I, I, need to find, I need to find the photos so that I can see what the model was so I can actually find out exactly what it was. But yeah, it was so cool. We recorded live as a band. So we'd mic'd up the drums. Again, we had more than one mic. It wasn't just the one hanging mic. We had a few mics on the drums. We had mic on uh, the guitar amps and then uh, vocals. And then we did overdubbing afterwards. So we recorded and then I got to go back in and sing the vocals and do some backing vocals. And I even overdubbed a guitar solo. And I was like, what magic voodoo is this? I mean, I had my four track at that point, but being able to play back and have eight tracks of digital audio, it was just unheard of. So that was my first real, real recording studio. I mean, it was a, a dude with long hair whose house smelt constantly like pot, but it was pretty cool. It was, it was a lot of fun back in the day. 
Alrighty. Uh, so I did. I did mention that we would uh, we would have in this last section some of the new words and terms that came about in two thousand and four. So these are some that uh, that I looked up and, and that uh, that I found according to again our friends at Wikipedia. So apparently e waste was a term that was coined in two thousand and four. Before then, I don't know what we called it, just old computers junking our electronics. But yeah, e waste is obviously a big thing. Please recycle your e-waste. If you've got old stuff, don't just throw them in the bin. Take them. Most places around the world will actually accept. I know this isn't supposed to be a lecture about recycling, but uh, e-waste is actually a big, massive deal. You see the the piles of e-waste that, that they have, especially in third world countries where people have to go through and like with their bare hands, they're pouring through our old computers and phones and pulling out the... Yeah, it's not a good thing. So recycle them responsibly. Life hack was a thing. So life hack was a term first coined in 2004. Where were we before life hacks? I don't know. We just did things and didn't call them life hacks. And has anyone ever had a life hack that actually works, that actually does something good? I don't know. They seem to just be something that BuzzFeed like to put uh, 12 life hacks. It'll save you time. This one weird trick. <laughs> uh, paywall. A word that many of us probably wish would go away, but paywalls, they weren't a thing. But yeah, a lot of the news companies, this was a, the, the dawn of the newspapers and the, the biz uh, sort of starting to see the writing on the wall and go, ah, oh, this internet thing's not actually going to catch on. And then by 2004, they were like, this internet thing is going to destroy us all. Quick, get all of our best content and put it behind a, what should we call that thing? It's like a wall that people have to pay to get behind. Let's call it a paywall. Yeah. And now we have paywalls up the wazoo. Podcast. Yeah, we hadn't, we didn't have podcasts until 2004. Uh, it was the first time we started calling them podcasts. But that, before then, it was internet radio or uh, an internet show or internet audio. We didn't actually call things podcasts. So there you go. Podcast came about in 2004. And the last one, believe it or not, social media. So yes, we had media. Uh, we didn't have social media. Because if you think about it, we, we did have MySpace, but we didn't have Facebook. We didn't call it social media. There was no sort of coined term social media. 2004, apparently, again, this is all subjective because it could have been 2003 or someone will say, no, I said it in 2001. But apparently social media became popular, became a new English word and term in 2004. So I thought those were a little bit of fun. So I thought we'd finish off with that. Hope you had some fun times uh, with this reliving, a bit of nostalgia. If you'd never seen this before, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have seen it before, I hope you liked reliving it and having a chat about it and digging into the archives and talking about how we created music back in the olden days. Anyway, uh, please jump over to Jade's channel now. If you're watching this live or even if you're watching the replay, uh, Jade is doing her daily show in uh, 15, 14, 13 minutes very soon. So jump over there. She's doing a how-to app series using the ridiculous modern technology that we definitely didn't even dream about in 2004. So do jump on over there and check out that. Uh, if you want to find out more, of course, about how to record in GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad, you can head over to studiolivetoday.com. Got some value out of this one? Hit the like button. Uh, join me on Patreon. Donate to the channel. Do all those good things down in the description. There's a bunch of things that you can do. But thank you for joining me here today. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it too and we'll be back very soon with more videos here on studio live today take care folks see ya